A um, couple of years ago, I dressed up as a flower, and my daughters were younger, and they dressed up as uh, bumblebees. So, yeah, it was cool. My wife made the suit. She did a good job. But we were in Arizona, and it was 102 degrees, and we were trick-or-treating, and it was a sweatsuit. It was a sweat, a green sweatsuit. So, all right, guys, I thought our preparation day was good. Uh, we had a good day at practice, and uh, everybody focused, was concentrating on uh, the job that they had to do their job, and uh, everything was good. So, any questions? Nick and a couple guys suggested you went back to some running, running punishments. Has that had an effect, do you think? Well, we will see. We'll, see. <laughs> we will we'll find out. You know, it's about the result. It's always about the result. And uh, we did that during training camp and, and get back to it. So it's all about concentrating, uh, concentration and focus. That's what it is. So. Pretty, uh, Brown, did he get the concussion during the game? Uh, w yeah, we believe so, um, but not really certain. Uh, I'm assuming since it was, you know, the symptoms were there, you know, before we went back out onto the field. Okay, he reported so. it between the game and yeah. Wednesday practice. Yeah. Eric Murray on the field today? Uh, Eric, we're still waiting some results for some tests. Um, we'll have that. I don't know when we'll have it. Probably this afternoon sometime. Is that yesterday? Yes, it happened yesterday. Okay, what is your theory on the, um, the best way to improve the, the red zone offense? Well, I think everybody's got to do their job, and uh, we've got to be consistent so much down there. The windows start getting tighter. Uh, because you don't have as much field to work with vertically. Uh, so you have to throw it into uh, tight windows. You have to make tight catches, tough catches, uh, and the protection has to hold up. So it's a little bit of everything. When you start talking about red zone offense, the, the you know, best red zone offense is to be able to run the ball. So. But yesterday, um, Baker acknowledged some frustration and said that his kind of sense of, sense of urgency, excuse me, is at an all-time high. Have you noticed any... Is there any detectable change in him the last couple of days, and are you glad to hear him convey those? Things? Well, I think that uh, should be the case all the time. You know, we don't have but 16 of these games, so the sense of urgency should be in how you prepare and how you uh, go out on the field and practice. And uh, I, I think Baker does that for the most part on a consistent basis, and uh, I definitely think it's continuing. Yeah. In the lineup this year, uh, to present some different matchup looks for the opponents, uh, it was supposed to be different for Landry. Uh, how has it been different for Landry uh, this year? Well, I think Odell and, and, and Jarvis are doing a good job of deciphering coverage and and getting to windows when it's applicable. And uh, we just got to continue to try to get better uh, timing, try to get better spacing, you know, all those sort of things that affect, uh, you know, your progress on an everyday basis and every game basis. Uh, are up uh, substantially uh, over uh, some of his uh, numbers in the past, but uh, you know, is that something that uh, you have noticed or uh, well, not? Uh, a little bit, but more so about yards per catch. Sometimes, you know, when you have good run after catch, that impacts that too. And Jarvis has done a good job of running after after the catch and gaining additional yards. So. Uh, all those yards matter, and all of them tend to add up. At the end of the year, you look and see somebody's yard per catch, but you don't really know how much of that's after the catch. Um, so, yeah, he's done a good job of, of getting down the field when he could and catching the ball and, and getting down the field after the catch. Has Carlson done enough to get a shot with Farrell Brown? Uh, Carl, uh, yeah, he's, I mean, he's in the mix, yes. Don't really know what we're going to do yet there, but. Definitely a possibility, though. I mean, I'm not trying to hide that. We need, you know, okay. we'd like to have three going into a game, yes. Um, Odell and Jarvis were both limited yesterday, according to the report. Did they look okay running around today? Yeah, they look good today. You know, just uh, even though it's uh, a Wednesday, sometimes, you know, it takes your body a little bit of time to recover, and different people for different people react differently. Um, we try to take care of our guys from the standpoint of, making sure they're healthy when they go out, but there are certain reps that they need to get, and I think they've done a good job of that. Were they a full go today? Excuse me? Were they full go today, or were they still sort of limited today? Uh, they, got the, they got the reps that they needed to get. With Odell and Baker, you talked a 
lot about their timing. That back shoulder throw against New England, is, is that an example of them just being a hair off where maybe Odell doesn't get his head around quite in time? I think we're trying to get better this week of, of making those throws and catches. Running rotation is just about split down the middle. Uh, what does that do for uh, a team that is able to you know, rest to each guy half the time? Uh, and where are the different elements that go into that? What was the first part of the question? Well, they have uh, almost the same exact number of snaps, the two Denver backs. Oh, the running backs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think they use them differently uh, for different aspects of their game. Um, they try to play to their strengths, and they do a good job rotating those guys in and out. They do. And allows them to be uh, successful. Have you, uh, of course, you running backs coach for a while here last year, so you'd have plenty of insight into that. But uh, and, and you know that there are backs over the years who've said, I, I need to get in a rhythm, which means I need a lot of carries. Uh, do you have a general philosophy on that in terms of you like to get a really good running back, a lot of carries, if you can? We're going to have a plan for Kareem when he gets back. That's what you're trying to get to, right? No, I said, <laughs> I, I question in and of itself, but that is obviously okay. a question. Uh, I think some guys are like that. Um, but I think in today's football, you can't really, uh, you know, you have to be willing to put the other guy in, you know, whether it's Dontrell, Dearness, Kareem, you know, whoever it is, whatever team it's on. Usually they've got two guys and, and most of the time three guys that they, they play on a consistent basis. Those guys get hit every play. Uh, either they're getting hit or they're hitting someone. So the contact adds up over the course of the year. Uh, so you always have to factor that in. Not to get too far ahead, but what, what kind of impact can, can Kareem have on your offense on the field? Well, Kareem's a good football player, and, and we're going to have a plan for him. Um, so it's always good to have those guys. Does your skill set allow him to play with Chubb at times if you, know, you wanted to go two back? Uh, yeah, I mean, Wishbone may make another appearance, right? Watching uh, Earl Campbell, and he was really fantastic for a while. <laughs> but then he, uh, he got the crap beat out of him for a while, and he had a short career. Uh, do you are you uh, cognizant of any particular backs in your experience who uh, tell you that you can only uh, run them so hard? Well, I think that's kind of been the for the last probably you know 20 years. That's what's kind of happened. People have increased the longevity of of running backs by doing that. You know, before running backs careers were five, six, seven years, and now you see guys that are playing into the double digits. So I definitely think that's a factor over the long haul. I mean, those those carries are cumulative from the standpoint of uh, plays and carries during the course of the year, but also during the course of a career. So when you get seven years down the road, of course, it's, it's substantial, uh, the amount of carries and things they've had. So he's averaging, I think, 19 a game which would give him 300 some for the year, 305 or something. I mean, do you look at numbers like that? I do, but I think it, it fluctuates from player to player. I mean, uh, Nick Chubb's in great condition. His body's uh, in great condition. Uh, workhorse, you know, and he wants to be. He wants to do everything he can uh, to help this team win the football game. Uh, how, how's he coming along? I know you can't activate him until uh, playing the game until next week. How's he coming along? He's coming along good. He's, I think he, uh, he stayed involved as far as uh, mentally. So he's come off of this uh, IR. Really, you know, really these guys as rookies, they come in and, you know, everything's so fast for them. And then he had the uh, opportunity to use this injury to his advantage from a standpoint now he's able to sit back take a break or take a breath and see what's going on around him uh sort of speak and i think it's benefited him so where, would, where does he fit in best uh when, when you do activate him where does he fit in best on your line? well he'll, he'll see where he's at you know as far as what we're running right now he's running more scout team stuff uh, what position? uh well i don't know what position you want him to play no, last week, now you were trying to figure out who we were playing at left tackle, right guard, right tackle. You were trying to figure, you tried to trick me into several questions last week, and I haven't forgotten that. Uh, Drew, Drew does a good job of snapping the ball. He, he can snap the ball. He can play center. I mean, he can play guard. Um, so, one of those spots, you know. 
Guys have been talking for weeks about how hard it is to just win in this league and win consistently. This may sound silly, but does this team know how to win at a high level? I think we have to learn how to, to consistently do our job and put ourselves in position to win. Um, and then you have to go win. Sometimes you just have to go win the game, all right? And not, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to go win the game. And I think we want to continue to try to put ourselves in those positions to go win the game at the end. Well, I mean, sometimes you just have to go make a play uh, when there's always a crucial moment in the game, all right? And you have to recognize when you're in that moment and go make the play, all right? Sometimes you look back in hindsight and say, that was the play. Well, just play the, every play the best you can so then you're on the good end of that more so than on the bad end of it. Every game you win or lose, there's always a moment where you look back and you say the game was decided right then, okay? So if you're playing every play, you end up on the good side of that more often than not. That's what I mean by just go win the game. You're really trying to win every play. You know, you're not going to win every play. But if you consistently just try to play the best that you can and do your job on that play, then ultimately you'll be in position to win the game. A couple more. You've talked about preparation a couple different times this year, that we had a good week of preparation, if, if we prepare like this going forward like we did. But it seems like it's been a little inconsistent. Is that fair and, and, and why, if so? I definitely think there's better weeks than others. And that goes back to some of the things we're trying to clean up is, is uh, work on our preparation. Uh, work on our uh, execution during the course of practice. Uh, so when it gets to Sunday, it's not a surprise that we're executing. You said Von Miller's one of the best. What makes him that in your mind? Size, speed, strength, uh, just athletic ability, the ability to bend, uh, turn the corner, and then transition over into power. Uh, most of your great defensive rushers are, are great edge rushers that can transition to power, and he does a great job of that. Gurney played his best couple of games with you the last two weeks, the last yes. two games. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Uh, I mean, I think he's been in position to make some plays and he's made the plays. So I think Olivier is just like everybody else. He's continuing to work and try to get better. Um, uh, we like to, everybody to have a role and then them to do their role uh, to the best of their ability. And that's what he's done. Do the NFL uh, games run together for you when you've been in so many of them? Or I'm asking about last year's game at Denver. Do clear memories? Uh, of that game come back to you uh, as you go through the week preparing for them? Yeah, especially when you uh, you go back and look at uh, tape during the course of the year. Uh, you know, there's a lot of tape watching that goes on, uh, you know, during the course of the week. But, yeah, I mean, I like to think my memory is pretty good from the standpoint of, of what actually happened, critical plays, uh, different coverages, different blitzes, pressures, uh, different situations that those things come up. I like to feel like I, you know, I have a pretty good memory of things like that. Kind of a huge difference between uh, last year's Denver staff and what this year's is uh, trying to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not even remotely the same from standpoint of, um, you know, their base three four team last year was four down, you know, so it's yeah, it's totally different. Did Wyatt Teller uh, do enough in his eleven snaps to earn more playing time? Question straight up. <laughs> you want me to give you a treat now, don't you? You like that play on words on Halloween? Um, I don't know. We'll find out Sunday. <laughs>